can you hear me? Is it working? Great. Hi, everyone. I'm really excited to be here to talk about designing for users of different cultures. So uh, my name is Jenny, and I'm an independent UX product designer. I freelance through TopTel, which is an elite freelancer network, and I'm also the Amsterdam uh, chapter founder of Ladies at UX, which is a global nonprofit organization that aims to promote diversity and female talent. So before uh, I go further, actually I'd like to understand who are from Austria, who are local people, right, the majority, who are not from Austria, who are coming from abroad. Actually, that's a lot of people too. So you see we already have a mixture of different cultures uh, in this room, uh, which is great. So let me tell you a little bit about my background. I was born in Taiwan, and then my family moved to Canada. And since 2012, I lived and traveled to uh, multiple countries. So these are the countries that actually had a, had a long stay. And I'm currently living in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. So that's where I'm based. And because I have a passion for living and traveling abroad, I now have the opportunity to design for clients around the world for users around the world. So these are uh, my, so I will be talking about my uh, process when approaching localization projects. And the first thing we need to know about localization is that we must understand what is culture. Social, uh, Dutch social psychologists here to state divided culture into different, six different culture dimensions. So according to him, culture is a aspect uh, of human diversity, and he's, his uh, culture dimensions comes in six parts. Power distance, individualism, masculinity, uncertainty avoidance, long-term orientation, and indulgence. And this is how Austria is different from Taiwan in terms of culture. As you see, uh, Austria has higher individualism, the Taiwan has more <laughs> higher power distance, and later on we'll be talking about how uh, these culture dimensions actually apply. But why should we even care? Why should we actually care about culture? According to Jacob Nielsen and Elisa Delgado, the author of International User Interfaces, it is not enough to just translate your product into different languages. Users actually expect that you localize a product so that it acknowledges the business uh, practices and unique cultural characteristics. So let me talk you through my process of localization. The first thing you can do is research the local culture. So I'm now living in uh, Holland for about two years, and I have some understanding about the cu Dutch culture now. But in one of my first projects for uh, Holland, I actually made a mistake. And actually, that, that made me learn a lot about Dutch culture. According to Keir Hofstede, Dutch culture is high on individualism, uh, middle in power distance, and high in uncertainty avoidance and long-term orientation. His summary of the Dutch culture is that they are pragmatic, they are thrifty, and they have a strong tendency to save money for the future. How does that translate to user interfaces? This is one of my first projects at Travelbird, which is an online travel agency. And what we, uh, my project here is to design a form that collects the passport names and data so we can book the user of the flight. So now the problem here is that users were not filling in their passport names. They were filling, <coughs> filling in their initials or nicknames, which are pretty common for Holland. So what I did here is that I made a passport icon. I made a warning pretty big and bold. And it says, make sure your name matches the one in your passport. If it doesn't match, you could be denied at the gate. So I thought, that's a pretty serious consequence, and surely users must follow the rules. And after implementing the design and testing for two weeks, we actually learned that this was not very effective. Users were still filling in their incorrect names, like nicknames. <coughs> so I had to actually research what other Dutch sites are doing and learn uh, how is the Dutch culture applies to the user interface. So this is Trendavia. This is a Dutch uh, airline. And in the booking form, they actually have a big, uh, big, sec uh, big section about, are you uncertain this name is the one in your passport? You can pay 4 euros and be able to change the name, or you can pay 50 euros, and then you have to pay extra additional fees. 
So later I learned this probably is more effective on Dutch users to try to put a constraint so that they don't make uh, these mistakes. I also designed a lot for their neighbor, Germany. According to Kurt Hofstede, German culture is high on individualism, masculinity, uncertainty avoidance, and long-term attention. The Kurt Hofstede's summary of the German culture is that system, uh, systematic overview has to be given in order to proceed. And details are important to create certainty in users' mind, and that the topic has to be well thought out. Let me give you an example. This is the booking page for Travelbird, where this is the Dutch version. So users just pick a date and then continue to booking. This is the German version. <laughs> so as you see on the left side, as you see on the left side, there is a lot of uh, more information. In case you cannot read it, it is a list of inclusive and exclusive. So for example, transport to the hotel, is it included or not included? It includes three days in the hotel in this area and uh, details about their, their flight booking, and that's not included. So as a designer in e-commerce, uh, the more common assumption is that by telling users what is not included, they could be second-guessing themselves and then be looking for other packages. However, when we tested this at Travelbird, the list of inclusive and exclusive actually helped us increase the conversion rate for, German, for Germany. So another difference is the trust badges uh, on the bottom. <laughs> second, uh, second, uh, second process is research the local UI patterns. Did you know that the hamburger menu, or the three dots more icon, is not used in China very often. And instead, there is the discover menu, a discover icon in the form of a compass to tell the user, here's more options. Here's you can discover the other choices. And then Glover, which was a project manager at WeChat, he then, he then uh, researched several Chinese apps and found out that almost all of them have this discover menu, replace, uh, replacing the usual hamburger menu. Also, there's, this is another East versus West example, and this is Mozilla Firefox USA homepage. So as you can see, it's very clean. It has a one call to action button, download. Now let's look at the China version. <laughs> The Chinese version has a lot more content and has a lot more uh, ads, modules, and uh, content for the user to view. Brent Pitoyo is a design strategist at Mozilla, and he went to research why. He looked at the most popular uh, sites using both USA and China, and the most popular site is Google and Baidu, which are search engines optimized for searching. Now, if you look at the other sites, Yahoo, Sina, Sohu, 163 are search engines that's optimized for browsing, and they look like this. Pretty much like a portal design that looks like newspaper with a lot of content. So his assumption was that the difference because typing Chinese takes a long time and finding the precise word is not easy. So if search sucks, then we should optimize for browsing and give users the content for them to read. Another pattern I'd like to talk about uh, specific to Japan. So Japan uh, scores high in masculinity, uncertainty, avoidance, and long-term orientation, but they score low on individualism. In my research for Japan in e-commerce project, I found that ranking of product or ranking of style is very common. So for example, hairstyles or any, and of any fashion item, Japanese users want to buy what other people think is fashionable, what they think is trending, and they want to buy exactly the same as what everybody else has. But this is not common in the Western culture. For example, my American and Canadian friends, they go to exclusive sales and secondhand stores, thrift shops, so they can buy something very unique so that it can stand out from the rest of the society. So therefore, we can know that in Japan, a collectivist society, what other people are buying or, uh, or, or thinking is trending is very valuable. 
The third tip is to measure data to know if your design actually addresses uh, the pains and needs of the users. So Desbrucker is a client uh, that's based in Holland, and they asked me to increase the conversion rate for the German locale. So this was uh, the home page from before I joined. So I use the heat map to track where users are scrolling and clicking. And it was very weird that on this home page, the user first click on help and company related links like about. And of course, there's a high drop on the home page. So with my knowledge of German users, I, um, I had two assumptions, why users were dropping off and clicking on about uh, links. First is that there's a lack of trust. User didn't trust that this was a legit company because it was a startup. And then it was too ambiguous. It didn't provide information that user needed to see so that they didn't want to proceed to book. And I presented my client five, uh, five ideas to improve this. First, we need to add the trust logos because it's pretty common for Dutch, uh, sorry, German e-commerce sites to offer the trust logos, prove that this is actually a legit e-commerce store. And then reviews from German customers and German, uh, German company logos in the roster instead of Dutch ones. So really make it seem like it's a German site. Also add the accepted payment methods that's specific to Germany, like pay, uh, bank transfer. And finally, add a bit of description about the company in the footer so that users can see that it has a German address instead of no address at all. And this is the revised version with German, uh, German customer reviews, accepted payment methods, um, logos, and so on. And with these design and content changes, we were able to increase the conversion rate for Germany. Next tip is to start your design with the longest translation, or the, or the most complicated um, language. So at Travel Bird, also one of my first projects I worked on is the download the app uh, banner on mobile web. So I first designed it in English and Dutch, and I thought, OK, it looks pretty good, until I had to translate this to Finnish, which is one of the longest uh, languages of Europe. Then I know that uh, because of the length, it's depending on the width of the browser, then it might actually truncate, it might overlap, which is not good. So the solution here is to increase the vertical space to three lines. By, providing more, by adding more step space, it can now accommodate both the English and the Finnish, from, a, from one of the shortest to now the longest language. The same technique applies when you are designing a product listing page where the product name could be long or short. So by giving more vertical space, by giving more space, you, your, um, your design can now accommodate for both scenarios. And speaking of content, you must localize the copy. When I work with a Filipino client uh, to design a promotion that's buy one, give one free, I first designed with the North American phrase of buy one, give one free. Then I was corrected by the Filipino project manager that they said, in Philippines, we say buy one, take one, which was different. And, and I wouldn't have known if she didn't correct me. And now I moved to Holland, and I noticed that the same marketing uh, campaign is called one plus one. So you, may, you, so you must make sure that um, whatever country you're designing for, you know the local way of, um, of this campaign or this uh, marketing term. And whatever you do, now we learned how to localize and how not to localize. Don't use Google <laughs> Translate or any machine translation services for that matter, for anything that's going live for production. Or this can happen. <laughs> what could go wrong, right? Wait, let's use Google Translate. And I actually saw a live example. Um, so this company, they are based in Holland, and then they need to go to China to have a business meeting. Now, with best intentions, they translated the business card. But for someone who speaks Chinese, I actually spotted a few mistakes, and I wish that they, they didn't actually um, give them the business card. So the mistakes are, first, his name, um, Robert Wish, is now translated to Robert Ko. No idea why, but he may be puzzled why uh, the business partner is now calling Mr. Ro uh, Mr. Ko. 
Secondly, the phone numbers, the M probably doesn't mean much uh, in Chinese. And then to a Chinese reader or Chinese viewer, it's a bit weird to have spaces in between every two letters. So what they should have done instead is use the international from uh, phone number format with just a plus, plus three one, and then the numbers without the space in the middle. And lastly, the best from Amsterdam is translated to better be from Amsterdam. <laughs> so I hope you took away from uh, some localization tips, and thank you very much.